James. Not yet. I don't know yet. Is James? No word from James. But we have a quorum. All right. All right so five hundred one. Uh, call the meeting to order. Uh, Did anyone have anything to add to the minutes? No. It's a good uh, motion to approve the minutes. Second. Moved. How about first? (laughs) Someone first. first. I'm first. (laughs) We got that covered. Uh, So the next. Next meeting on the ninth. I actually can't make that, and uh, I'd like to move it. It's actually a short. It's only three weeks too. Um, I can move it to the seventeenth. So I don't know if you guys can check your calendars now, or if you want to get back. You're good. I'm good with that. You good? It's a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. Um, Al, are you good? I don't, I don't see a problem with it. Yeah. I may or may not. I'm, it's possible. Mark, are you good on the 17th instead I of think, the 9th? I think so, yes. All right, well, for now, we'll do this. We'll set up for 17th. If anyone has an issue, then just email me and we'll figure something out. Five, right? Five o'clock, yeah, good? Five, yeah. Be a pleasure to have a reason to get it done, right? <laughs> uh, so let's see, correspondence, got a couple of letters, a couple of, and you know, a couple of following complaints. Um, one letter came from Danny Hockman, just pointing out uh, the negative impact of the shear dock uh, along his coastline over there in Silver Beach, issues with the splashboards and, and uh, accretion and erosion that's taken place. Uh, also, he went into detail about a conversation he had with the former chairman, John Needham, who felt that the dock approval was a mistake. Um, then we got some correspondence from John Needham. Um, basically pointing out that uh, the dock code revision was uh, significant uh, and uh, hard to follow. Nevertheless, he, uh, he came out with a number of specific recommendations, uh, pretty much all of which are included in the code uh, proposal that we have. Um, as far as complaints, what I call complaints, Bo, you had pointed out that that dock, that float issue. Um, this was, I don't know where the point came from, but basically it's it's a code conundrum, right? It's, uh, and I'm, I'm, I wanna dig into it a bit because it's interesting um, and just leads probably to some more Maybe look at 128 and 90, which gotta be tightened up. Um, as far as dealing with floats that are just on people's docks or anchored, uh, not on docks, um, on their moorings or anchored. And it's just, just three different codes deal with floats in different ways. And it's a little maddening. Um, well, what is that on a, what kind of mooring is that dock on? On a holding mooring. It's on they're a hold. They're both on holding moorings. Right? Okay. That's so about the ones out in West Neck. Yeah. Yeah. Every year. Yep. And I'm trying to finally get to the bottom of it because yeah. uh, every year it comes up. Every year, everybody just kind of like goes like this. Like who owns it? Is unsure. No, no, no. We know who owns it, and and it's on a holding mooring, which is not boat specific. Although the subject who has holding mooring isn't legally entitled to holding moorings, but he has them nonetheless. Okay. Uh. So there's nothing specifically prohibiting 
keeping those types of floats in that scenario because they're not subject to a dock permit. So they're not a float as part of a dock elsewhere in Shelter Island because the subject doesn't own a dock. Uh, they're treated as vessels in the dock, in the mooring code. There could be vessels in the waterways code and they're not defined in the dock code. I think you'd have to throw a motor on it. In the dock code, right, you have to put more motor on it. Uh, then it would be a boat. So it's, it's just all kinds of crazy stuff. I enumerated everything, the inconsistencies in the code related to that. Uh, you know, I'm not qualified to make a determination of which code applies. I have an inclination of which one should apply for that particular application because it's a mooring. So I think mooring code should rule in that circumstance. But um, I kicked that to the town attorney. Uh, what was that? Three weeks ago, a month ago. And yeah. uh, I haven't heard a word back yet. So I'm not doing anything whatsoever on that until I get some sort of response. Um, and I, I kicked it to Billy just so that way he knew that obviously there was more coding consistencies to be addressed uh, in your future. Oh yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to start on the mooring code and the waterways code right January second. As soon as the break, move right into it. Yeah, <laughs> just kidding. So anyway, was, uh, the complaint actually was generated uh, from the committee member. Or this this particular one this time it's been different people every year, um, so that was the other thing because I just wanted the committee to know that it's not not being addressed and just adding and pass rates. Yeah, I'm gonna I'll I'll kind of pick through it and then I'll just send my thoughts to you and to Stephen and yeah. take it from there. Um, the other one was on a uh, regarding a dock that is coming apart. Um, do you know exactly, do you know whose it is or is that, because Rosenblum is no longer we there. We know that he just actually put a little bit of pieces in the puzzle. Apparently the property was sold. It's the old Judge Rosenblum, and I wanted to speak to the liaisons towards this, was is a dock that um, I believe it's in the radar somewhere with the town that's deteriorated. And then they tied it up. It's a float. And it was the old Rose Bloom, Bloom house, the judge wrote. Um, it was her Helen, house. Helen oh, Rosenblum. Helen's house. Um, but at any rate, the, the dock was secured, and I don't know where it was in that having it removed or not, but it's proceeded to disintegrate into the creek. There's not much of it left. And I just went by there the other day, and it looks like the hard dock itself, the, the, the fixed dock, has fallen on one side on the outer edge. It looks like maybe a stringer gave way. So I'm wondering if you can't expedite something or have something done to have that removed so that it doesn't disintegrate in the creek. I don't know, you know, obviously the float, but I was thinking, I don't know what legal grounds the town has to do it, but I'm thinking that the decking and the stringer should be removed from that dock too, if they're in fact falling apart. There's a whole section in the current dock code that deals with it. Um, um, so that was an issue. I think the I wanted to bring thing, and I, I can do this. Like I'll, from, as a result of this meeting, I, I'll do this, so you don't have to do anything else. Is you need to notify the building department, who is the dock inspector. That's what I see. Actively right. down there anyway, because the whole house is under. Yeah, it's all the rebuilding house, the whole thing. Uh, to just maybe face the water for a minute, and take a look at that next time. Yeah. Yeah. So I will kick that to them. With the preventative effort in mind. That's yeah, no, like it needs to, something needs to yeah. be done until okay. it can be permitted to be rebuilt. Exactly, because that's what they're going to have to go do. They're going to have to go yeah, in for not. a permit to rebuild it. But in the meantime, rather not have that out in the creek floating around all in parts and pieces. Good. Thank you. Uh, let's see, that's it for correspondence, and, um... Bill, when you get correspondence, is, is it addressed to you, or is it addressed to the WRC? No, the, both of these were addressed to the town board and ultimately were sent to me. Okay. So, so I, if I get WMAC, then it goes to everybody. Right. Yeah, because I didn't see anything about right. that. Shouldn't, shouldn't we be in the loop on that? On, on copies of these? I'll, 
I don't. I would think all of us should be. I, I would yeah, maybe think. just get us in the email thread or whatever you call it. Well, it it goes down board and it gets sent to me. It gets sent to me. It may I don't know if all of them do. I just get. It's got something to do with docs and moorings. Comes to me, but I'm happy to move to send them to everybody else. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Liaisons. Do you have anything to say for the liaisons? No. I don't, because it's not your normal one. Liaisons are. Busy. Uh, oh, you have anything else, Dad? Tonight? Uh, we uh, we finished all the seating, the annual seating with Cornell this year. Uh, we did scallops. I guess probably two weeks ago now. Oh, you did uh, do scallops? Yeah, yeah. We ended up with a lot of scallops. Did you? Uh, yeah, I think I did eighty-eight thousand in. Uh, I did eighty-eight thousand in Cockles Harbor, and then two days later, Butch did forty-four thousand in West. Bank. Forty-four thousand. Yeah. So you yeah. could better have that one to die. And uh, so that's good. Uh, Kate sent some stuff over. I don't know if she. I know she just emailed that. I think to you yesterday or maybe this morning. So that'll probably be coming your way. Just kind of whatever. Um, so that's great. Uh, a lot of product went into the into the waters around here this year. Uh, you did clams a couple of weeks or so, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. We, uh, right. we did oysters a lot. We, did, I mean, I think we did like I forget what the exact number for, but it was three quarters of a million oysters. I think we put in the water this year. Oh, okay. Because uh, I, I got a number of, from Kate. I chatted with Kate. She said there was uh, five thousand over five hundred thousand clams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was a lot of product went into our waters this year, so uh, that's good. Are those yeah. at regular locations? Like, there's always a location that they go to, or is it just sort of broad spread no, around? No, and then... we we choose some locations. Generally speaking, there's there's two like primary factors, right? One is suitability for the product, right? We're not going to put scallops where they're definitely not going to lay in for so on and so forth. Uh, the other is we try to balance it with public access, right? Because the idea is that ultimately these become harvestable products. So we try to focus on areas that meet those two criteria. And then if there's other areas, like there's just a really good eelgrass bed somewhere, even though it's not proximate to a town landing, we would probably try to seed that area as well, right? So try to balance everything so that way it doesn't stop, you know, give it the best shot there is. Uh, always open to suggestion. Uh, we document where everything goes. And then I just recently saw uh, Cornell puts out, puts out every year. i had never seen it until this year. I saw last year's and I've now seen this year's sort of like a, a map of it, right? You know, showing different little areas where we did what we did, that sort of stuff. So um, in like a sort of end of season report that they produce. So you guys will have a copy of that. I've asked that that come here now uh, as well. So you guys will get that. Uh, if I get it and you don't, I'll, I'll forward it to you. But um, uh, like the final one, I saw the one from last year. But anyway, I think Kate is going to be coming to you guys in sort of a formal uh, setting, and then and probably the next meeting would be my guess. Uh, and she'll probably put test. Uh, long shellfish conditional program, right, in Deer and Harbor. We're tentatively set, I hope. I haven't got the paperwork back, but my last conversation with them was. I'm pushing for December 1st, which I think is a Sunday. Uh, and they may not do it, they may be. Because uh, the weekend. Second. When I got, I tentatively got weekends and holidays reinstated. We did. Oh, yeah. good. Thank you. Um, That's great. I fought for changes in, in rainfall, uh, the, the way that we were measuring it, rather than having, uh, you know, cumulative in a 24 hour period, switching to a rate per hour. Uh, long story short is they don't have a method that they approve of for doing that. So Their math yeah, doesn't math. More to come. <laughs> more to come on that. Basically, they shut me down on every other request I had. Um, okay. But in the interest of time and not delaying it, sort of frittering about these different little components that we so want what to you get. 
and run. Take what we can get right now, and then hopefully, uh, I'm gonna work with Matt. I've asked him to weigh in on, on the information they gave me, because it's way outside my wheelhouse, and he seems to be really, really good with, with that sort of data sets. Um, so we're gonna work together on that and try to come up with something. Um, I've asked for a meeting with the DC as well, to try and develop new protocol that they would accept for changing this stuff. Uh, I mean, we could be the guinea pigs for that for other places. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, um, that's good news. Yep, right that's good. And we have, uh, we're just about done uh, with the design on the new workboat. Uh, again, this is just the design phase, okay? Uh, once we have that in hand and completed, uh, then we'll be going to the town board ultimately uh, to get permission to bid it out, to put it out to prospective bidders, get quotes back on that, and then ultimately, hopefully, be able to award uh, a contract to somebody at some point to build that. So that's just a little update on where we're at with that. Really, functionally, nothing has changed anywhere other than we're almost done designing something. So the guy who's responsible for is really great if anybody needs to work with somebody sometime, highly recommend them. That's all I got. Is it in the budget? No, no, it's a waterway. We're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're going to look to take it from the waterways fund. Like that's where we're, we're specifically requesting to take it from. So, provided of course that the bids come in somewhere where we think they might and that there's the funds available and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So. Thanks. Uh, so we'll segue to the Waterways Fund. Uh, as far as my comments, don't have all the detail yet on the budget. Just have to, to I want to compare it to last year's. There's a little, as far as expenses go, uh, it's bumped up about $5,000. And that looks mainly to be due to uh, testing the big uh, Conic Baykeeper enter Interococcus testing that we're doing and um, online mooring. I'm not sure why that's more than last year. They have to look it over. Um, there shouldn't be any costs for, to us for online mooring. No, that's passed on. That's user. Yeah, passed through, straight yeah. through. Yeah, I'm just looking at a line on charges. Uh, but then I guess that would show up on the revenue, revenue side. side. Yeah. Uh, Out of curiosity, what's that amount though? There's a bunch of them. There's one for uh, 505 dollars, 623 dollars, 178 dollars. I mean, it's, there's one for 2,500 dollars. Right. Okay. All right. I mean, most of this is online. More all these items I'm looking at. Yep. Okay. Um Well, on the revenue side, that's. Yeah, I don't have all the revenue numbers either, but revenues uh, went up a lot more than five thousand um, dollars. I think it's and I and all the items that are included in it, I don't have that nailed down yet either. But moorings alone should be uh, when it's fully when it fully kicks in, probably about one hundred and fifty, I would say. Um, but then there's also dock fees and. Uh, or boat storage might be part of it, but um, still kind of working through that. Um, so the items, the uh, application was made to the Suffolk County Planning Commission to extend the moratorium and that was granted. Uh, the extension date to now. Uh, Three months, I believe. Three months. Hopefully, we don't use the three months. No. Um, but the oh, it's in the works, um, being revised, and that's it for my comments. So, new business. We've got two applications. One is for the island boatyard. I need to recuse myself on Island Boyard because I do business with Island Boyard. So I'm going to step out and Matt will carry through on that one. Um, and then we just have comments. Um, the, you're, 
Are you recusing on the grounds that you're just simply a customer or is, okay, because I am also a customer, but in this case, I don't see grounds to recuse. It's an island infrastructure, there's only two of them. Um, it's simply being customer. I don't see the grounds for recusal. I think it's a straightforward ask for something. And I think it, well, so the, the, the situation is that, like, question i guess right here yeah i mean so if you're doing business with them then you you know the red flag goes up mm -hmm. uh the question is whether you're using any discretion and uh in other words if it's clearly black and white you don't need to use any discretion then maybe you don't need yeah. to recuse yourself my thinking was it's pretty straightforward well yeah well i looked at it that you don't know what other issues other members might raise and you really shouldn't get into that and ask those questions beforehand. So you almost, you're kind of like putting a box where you have to recuse yourself. Because if you, if the issues come up, you shouldn't have been part of the discussion to begin with. So should I recuse myself? Are you doing I mean, I do stuff? like sell them small things. I don't see how that's impactful in any decision we're making, but just for transparency's sake. Yeah, I mean, that's I was thinking just in transparency. I mean, if I sell someone an engine part, that's like half a island so. of one of the two facilities that hauls, that has haul out. Most, most, have, most have, of these people. I think you want to go, you're also competitive. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 right? Yeah, we buy fuel there. Actually, that's probably, that's, probably the more rele that's probably the more relevant thing. Right, right. right. Left with the quorum if we can, uh, if we all recuse because we're simply customers. Uh, I, mean, I don't know how many are customers. Our ethics don't only addresses. Uh, Financial interest. Yeah, well, so exchanging money, but uh, yeah, I mean, if I you mean, I'm, a, I'm me, right? Yeah, <laughs> I'm not where I work, right? At that point, I have no connection. I don't care. I can sit out and just watch you guys talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, like, I'll sit here happily. And watch well, it's it's interesting, you know. If you read if, when you read the ethics code, it, that if it affects a lot of people or the general public. And you're all, I'd say you're pretty close to there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then you, you don't have an issue because if, you, if it affected everyone, then we wouldn't be able to talk about the budget or anything else. So I would think that you don't have a problem. You don't have a problem. You don't have a problem. I'm not sure about you. And I see Meg's got her hand raised and she's done more work with ethics to try and make sure she's. Oh, understands. good. Oh, good. So, that would help. And yes. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. Where is she? She's on Hi. Zoom. I'm on Zoom. Um, I would say if you can, you can always disclose what your relationship is. If it's like, Hey, I rent a slip from them every year, but you know, it's just like a million other people do. Um, it may not be a conflict if you like, if you, if they pay you for services, it could be a conflict if it's going to impact some kind of financial working relationship with them. But in, at some point, it it gets to be like, well, I also go to the IGA, so can I weigh in on an IGA application? <laughs> like, you know, if they do provide a service for a good number of people. If you're receiving the same service as a million other people from that entity, I think it's okay if you have a very specific working relationship, like you run their mooring program or you, um, you know, are a manager for them, something like that, where it is a good portion of your income or, um, you know, that relationship really, you could make a decision based on that relationship, then you'd recuse yourself, but you can really just disclose, hey, I rent a slip here, uh, but I do feel like I can be objective in this. And if members of the board have a problem with the fact that you rent a slip from them, then, you know, you guys can all discuss amongst yourselves whether you feel like that's worthy of uh, recusal or not. But it kind of really in our ethics code comes down to a real financial um, benefit if, if you make a significant, if, if it has significant financial benefit. Good. All right. Just yeah. some clarity. I, Thank you for the clarity. Yeah, I, uh, I store my boat there. I pay the same thing everybody else pays. I don't think uh, I don't think they're going to be slipping me any discounts or anything. So I can... my fault. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good. Um, okay. So I also have been a store my boat there for ten years, eleven years now, and there's no money coming this way to it. Mom, let's step on the side. Is somebody else? Happen? I don't know.
Some of these kid was talking in the back. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, so with that I'm a customer and I don't I don't have you know, I can be a objective here. Good. So we're all roll in. Anyone have a problem with any of the relationships any of us have? Good. Um I got there occasionally. You what? I buy gas there occasionally. <laughs> all right. So Rob, you wanna walk us to it? I see you're on here. Sure. Yeah, thank you. And I, I was going to offer the unsolicited opinion that it usually, in, in my experience with this stuff, if someone on a committee has an opportunity for a financial gain or loss based on the outcome of this particular application, then you would have to recuse yourself. But, you know, we're, we're talking about, we're not talking about whether Island Boatyard should continue to exist or not, just whether they can do maintenance work. So, so with that as a a quick segue, I wanted to mention Ian Crowley is also here. Ian is the uh, contractor and may be able to uh, more articulately explain uh, an answer to any real technical questions anyone has. But the, the broad brush stroke here is uh, that mostly this is a maintenance application for the in-place uh, removal and replacement of existing bulkheading. Um, there is on the, and, and most of the work, I mean, there's a lot of sheets here from Jeff Butler, but page SP2 of seven has a uh, blown up site plan review, site plan view called comprehensive partial site plan, all proposed work. And pretty much everything that's being proposed can be found on that one when drawing on the, on the left-hand side of page two. Um, so on the north end, um, the the wall is the, the the wall is going up in height to match the rest of the wall that's on site, and also to sort of even off the elevation with that uh, deck behind it. As right now, there's like a sort of unnecessary step down there, um, and then of course the. You know the 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 replacement wraps around to the south, um, not very far south of of the haul out it's basin, nice. and that's really kind of the that's that's the one main thing that just makes this different from a, a run in the mill replacement application, which is the fact that the depth uh, of that slip is being increased about four feet uh, at the expense of existing uh, parking lot. So, um, I mean, if anything, the, you know, the, the project results in a net increase in water surface area uh, at the site, but, you know, again, mostly neither, neither here nor there. Um, there'll be less parking lot, a little more slip. And then uh, there's just maintenance dredging, uh, you know, inside, um, you know, inside the basin and the uh, DEC had asked us to show a proposed silt boom uh, that would wrap around the uh, proposed dredge area, which I worked out the logistics and placement of with Ian. That was added to the plan. Um, that was prior to our submission to the town. So the plans you have show that. Um, so this same exact plan has uh, was approved by the New York State DEC. Uh, you may recall that was the problem with getting on your agenda a month ago, whenever it was. We didn't have that permit yet. We've since received that and sent that over. We also have our permits from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, uh, New York State Department of State Coastal Resources folks. Uh, so now we're we're up to to needing your approval and the and the town board's approval. Uh, and that's where we are. And the only change I had noticed was what you just went over that four or five feet of extending where the travel lift goes, right? Correct. And Ian, do you have anything to add in, in terms of, you know, the, the logistics of how that's being done? Or does anyone have any questions for Ian about that? Or does it seem pretty straightforward? I don't have anything to add. I can answer any questions anyone may have. So the um, the um, the bulkhead is being brought landward around the slip, 
but the travel lift is actually the, the tracks are going to be the same location. So basically, you're, you're building supports for the travel lift, and then it's the, just because it's, it's just back. Like, talking about a foot. Well, yeah, the, the, yeah, the four four foot extension, but along the sides as well. But it's not getting wider. But you're moving no, the bulkhead. Okay. No, the the uh, rail is going to be exactly the same. Okay. The rail is going to be exactly. It may be configured slightly differently under underneath, just based on how like the vinyl lays out and such, but there'd be no, actually, I think the piles right now stick into the slip a little bit. And I think by design or they were very adamant about them not going into the slip. So any, any, any movement of the bulkhead and we're talking about inches, not feet would be landward, not seaward. We wouldn't be, there'd be no filling per se. Like if we yeah. had, we would move the bulkhead back a few inches to accommodate whatever is deemed necessary as far as structural support goes yeah jeff's plans are showing the same the same clear clear opening the same 16 and a half foot width yeah they, they, they're keeping they're not getting a new machine <laughs> their machine is set yeah, that's uh, the, the way it, it seemed like i just was saw the discrepancy between it was getting wider but the rails are the same so i just didn't right. Uh, nice you're looking at this in the computer. Yeah, yeah right. I have trouble reading on that computer screen when I lost some stuff. What the, the ways here? I think this is uh, this I think this is right outside the salt building. Yeah, like, I think there's it? a step down there saying. Yeah, what was it? A six inch raise in the decking there, but in front of the restaurant? The, the, the high raise right. was about six That's inches. Right. Yeah, it's just to level out that whole thing, right? Because you said that we've stepped, you probably just, yeah. it's probably just an everything. It's a safety issue. To be I was going to say, it's probably helping a lot more people than we realize. Yeah. yeah. It's got around midnight. Yeah, exactly. It's the, like a wedding reception or something. Yeah. And the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, towards the end, towards the, uh, where the, um, the boat slips are, like, so we're away from the, the travel lift end, but the other end, um, the dredge stops. Does it does it cur, cur, um, curl around the uh, the turn there where the steps are going up, or it, it stops there? That's where it you're... does not. It it stops because of the fact that that um, it, once you once you get to that point, first of all, it's not a dockage area, and second of all, that's where that uh, little bit of vegetated wetland is. And in fact, if you look at the siltation boom configuration, that was one of the requests of the DEC is that boom actually wrap around and run along the seaward edge of the marsh and tie into where that return is. Okay. Oh, so, uh, so it comes back in. Okay. Outside. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's not, so that, that area is intended to be protected and set off from the maintenance dredging. When you plan to start the project. I mean, if everything went swimmingly, I would say right after the holiday, by late December or early January, provided we can get the permit from the board by then. I don't know procedurally how, what time frame we're looking at. I don't want to be- Well, the town, the town board meeting is next Monday, and if they resolve to approve it that evening- um we've actually been getting the the permit in hand from the town clerk quite quickly okay so, so that date, well, that date is then that date should be realistic yeah As, again assuming if if the wmac uh grants their blessing the town board doesn't have any issues and they approve uh we would i, I would say there's a good chance we would have the the town's permit should be the final permit in hand the first weekend, the first week of December. Again, if all goes <laughs> swimmingly. Right. It's a short window. You get the job done, right? <clears throat> going to take all of three months to get that done, right? I don't think we're going to be there three months. But we'll definitely be there too. Yeah, we definitely that we can't. You know, we'll, we're going to have to be there every single day, kind of hell or high water. Maybe not high water, but yeah. <laughs> no, I just we'll get it done. Yeah, we'll get it done by launch season. It's a time frame, so if the town can expedite in any way, that'd be the way to go to get it all rolling. Yeah, I don't know when James is on, but he's I he's not clicked in. But I don't know what day they would start technically on their calendars. Uh, 
putting the boats back in. I'm sure they have a schedule, and I'm sure he'll he'll keep me aware of it. <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> uh, Al, you have any other questions on it? I think it looks great. I think it will be a nice improvement. It's definitely needed, and. Uh, you know, I, I, I stopped down there and James gave me a tour, what, you know, a physical tour, what he was going to do or wanted to do. I, I think it's great. I think we should move him forward. I agree. Uh, I think it's, I, I think it's uh, definitely needs to be done. Uh, Thanks for all the, uh, the giant documents. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, it's very helpful. So I'm, I'm, I'm all in. You're welcome. Uh, um, um, yeah, I think it's, it's needed, yeah, and I think uh, hopefully it moves along smoothly for you. I'm in, yeah. And yes, like Matt good. said, this guy was good. Really documents. <laughs> Mark, you have any comments? I'm perfectly fine with it. All right, I'm I'm good. I think it looks, looks great. I think it's a good improvement. And uh, they were six and missing one. So six and out. Well, awesome. Thank thank you for thanks uh, guys. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. All right. Good night. Good night. Next is Cummings for some mooring application of uh, the Heights Bluffs. Can you put that one up on the screen? And let's see how far out that placement is. The beach club, it's, uh, let's see, is that a great, um, I feel like I've seen a boat there. It's, it's a gray it's protector. It's gray, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the, the scorpion. Oh, yeah, yeah. scorpion. Yeah. But he's got a protector, too. He's got yeah. he all kinds of stuff. Uh, we'll put the boring on land there. Okay. Yeah, you just traditionally now it's uh, depicted if it was a state bully. Oh, okay. So oh, it may have been. Bully it, it may have been at one oh. point. Right. So how far out is he, yeah, really Christina? Close. It's really close, isn't it? Yeah, I know. It's yeah, yeah. Shallow. What is that? Oh, is this that pipe one? This yeah. One? I think so. This the the applicant bought uh, Jones's house, and I'm Our nearly friend. certain that yeah. that's been Jones's formerly been Jones's mooring location. Yeah. So, in which I believe was a small stake and pulley setup. They have it. You talk about the one on the beach. Uh, no, I'm talking about the one where the pin is right oh, now. Oh, yeah. 36. Location formerly occupied by. Oh, so he's asking for a mooring instead of a stake of bully. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know what he's I didn't look at the application. Oh, no, he's looking for a mid type 800 pounder. Yeah. Are we supposed to know more about the boat? Well, it's a repair. That one is Sorry, I never had a question. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's no boat connected to it. And he's got direct access to the water there, right? That's property he runs right down to. The water? Yeah, that pan yes. goes right from it. I mean, that proximity to the beach is not right. No. We know what that that's, yeah, that's the location that Ben Jones had his, okay. his skiff there, right? Okay. So that the location. Yeah, it looks so close. It's I mean, 38 feet. It's, 30, it's, 30, yeah, that's, 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 it's in about eight, six feet of water, not even five feet of water. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what kind of boat he's planning on putting on it, but. Uh, With an 800 pound mooring. <laughs> I would think that that's a big boat. Yeah, 36 footer and he's 30 feet, 38 feet off, off the beach. That could be rough at a full moon, low tide. Um, you know, that should be pushed out a little bit further. 3455, that's, you, you said that's the Scorpion? <laughs> yeah, that's like a pretty large inflatable. Yeah. Do we know how much water is underneath that other one? There's a lot of water there at that point. 
It's probably a ton it's of water. Deep, deep, deep fast, right? Yeah. So if that's a 38, what happens if you push that thing off to 100 feet offshore? Because without a depth gauge underneath that pin, it really wouldn't help. Huh? That, that's 100 feet? That's all. Uh, it's... All right, that's close. There you go. That's 100 feet. So the 3455 is 110. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, and the dock and the other, what's the thing down there? What is that? Is the float? I think it's a float from the beach club. There's, the there's another float in the water. I was going to say, is that just fun? I guess. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yep. That's the first thing that's told me soon, honestly. Well, I mean, it seems to make sense to keep the, you know, like a, a line here. And this is. I don't, know, I don't know if we need to go 100 feet, but. If you're the same distance as that float, there's not enough water under there. I mean, it's that's pretty shallow. Oh, the float shallow? Really? It's just, well, swimming, it's just it, swimming float, you know, like the, the, off of the off of that dock. Right. right. So it just can defines their swimming area. But I mean, um, I think the water there is maybe well, I guess maybe seven feet. Right. Yeah, because you, you go down the end of that dock on those steps, um, and it, you know, depending on the tide, it's you know, step. Be, oh, really? It could be here or it could be here. I mean, but it's in that range. So yeah, I would expect to be outside of that line of the dock and that float for a reasonable. So I'm so you're swing, swing. Really if, you, if you decimate the distance of 34.55, yeah. right? And then move, apply that distance to this proposal and you have a similar sort of shear line there. Yeah. yeah. No, it seems like 100 feet makes sense. So we should, we should probably put them out there. What happens if you put them in line with the other with the other board? How does that look? That's that's one hundred and fifty. Oh, no, I'm just guessing. Sorry. No, from, if you went from 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 you know, just from here to the there. other more into the river. Yeah, the other more here. Sure. So yeah, Hundred seventy-five. That's not really. That's kind of an yeah. angle, is it? Yeah. Might be too far. So a little less than that, maybe. Yes. Yeah. Well, let's. I. Hundred feet makes sense to. 100, yeah. Hundred. Hundred fifty. Hundred twenty-five. Hundred twenty. I mean, does twenty feet make a difference? No. Depth wise. Depth wise. Five foot boat. How long is it? I think feet. that dock is like a hundred feet from the. Assuming there's enough water there, which I believe there is. Well, I mean, it's like most of the shoreline goes off. Yeah. 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 I was going to say, I'm more, I'm more worried about the other way. Yeah. 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 That one's 175. I'm going to make this one 175 and just keep the line there. Okay. Well, keep a line. Don't forget the boat's going to have a, you know, a, a, quite a swing, right? It's going right. to have a slack chain. and. Uh, yeah. I know that the further out you go, the deeper it is, and it's going to have a lot of, it's going to have a lot of scope on that thing. That's why I'm thinking maybe we don't want to be out that, you know, just give them enough water. Yeah, depth would Why don't we give them a range, say anywhere from 100 feet to 175 feet and let the contractor decide? That's what those guys do for a living. Be on YouTube. Who's the contract to show the application? The tackle is not good. <laughs> yeah, Shelter Island ground tackle. Uh, yeah, I guess we could do something like that. Who's the contract? Who's doing the part? Shelter Island ground tackle. Is that bird? Or is that, uh, it is? Yeah. I'd feel more comfortable if we gave more specific. What are we just like not? Things just not telling the contract here, go ahead, put it in water after you want it. So, can I make a suggestion? Yes. Don't act on the application. Send it back to the applicant saying, we, we, we need, I need you to move offshore somewhere or know what your boat is to make the decision and come back. He's obviously not putting a boat in right I was going to say, he shouldn't be pressed for yeah, this. Plenty of time. Yeah. For his December boat. I mean, he just, I think yeah. he just, 
basically closed on the house like last week or something. Right. Um, uh, that's actually a good idea, I think, because get back. presented is just, it's not adequate. He's got to be further off. Comes back with another, with a And maybe since propose some ordinance, if you have yeah. them, that's fine. But I would say get it back and say, we, we, we're not comfortable putting an 800 pound pyramid 38 feet from shore. The math doesn't matter. Yeah, not only yeah. like it's leaving easy. it wide open. I mean, wide open works here only because there's no other moorings around, but I don't want to. Yeah, I mean, he's got a, leeway there. It's a precedent of like, okay, put it between 100 and 175 feet or something. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that idea. Do you have anything on our application that actually says, hey, this is going to be, this morning's going to be in X depth of water? I mean, that might be helpful to. That's a good It's a really relevant data point. <laughs> so keep, that in, keep that in mind for when you're redoing the morning program. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great point. So we, we already we have this all. Sorted out already. We're not have worked on this. We have a brand new boring permit application form yeah. that we have been sitting on for quite some time now. And eventually that's going to get rolled out and has all of you know like relevant information and not irrelevant information. Um, so maybe starting the first of the year, we'll roll that out. Uh, prior to next meeting, maybe I'll introduce that stuff to you guys. We separated the commercial from the Recreational, so that way 99% of the applications that you get don't have all that other jargon that's on there. It's just kind of a straightforward type of thing. So uh, we're one step ahead of you, Matt. All right. Good. Good. All right. Well, I mean, it makes sense to me to uh, bounce it back and get some more information from Bert or the boat owner or the property owner. Does that work? Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, it's just too, too big. Will contact, Will contact him? Um, I can contact. I to do it. All right. Uh, let's see. Old business. Uh, we still haven't gotten a DEC permit or framer, so we're still waiting on that. Yeah. Uh, business. So there's a proposed calendar. I don't know if you guys saw it. I mean, we take them one at a time. If there's problems with a date, we move it around. But this is what's these are the openings we know where we have a time slot available for a meeting. Anybody right off the bat have a problem with any of these dates? Off the bat, no, but a couple of them, you know, it's like you got like six weeks be between meetings and another, others, you have two weeks between meetings and that. You know, it doesn't need bother me that much, that, but I, yeah, I don't know. We should be Regularly meeting every month. It's yeah, I don't know. Stuff on the agenda. That's the only thing. I'm going to get kicked around between second and third Mondays. It's why is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Town board meetings? Yeah, it's just the way they felt. The ugly stepchild. I made, yeah, I made up all of our meetings. <laughs> really fit. Mm. Okay, well, we will. Uh, you know, the agenda will kind of determine whether we need to push out or stick with, you know, yeah. the end of the we can, I don't know what the hell I'm doing any of these dates, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so we have on the agenda. We would have five or six of them. We have a time to be here. So we've been doing, uh, Five during the winter months, right? Yeah. And six during the summer months. So I would say January through April, five o'clock. The tide, tide. Well, whenever the clock changes, is basically the one. January to April, yeah. January to April at five, and thereafter from through what? Then you go October. from May May till October, yep. six. Six and then November, December, five again.
All right. So we got motion to adjourn. Just didn't, uh, didn't mention anything about the dredging. Just uh, oh, okay. the county was here for close to two months dredging West Neck, uh, Dickerson, and where else? West Neck, Dickerson, Banana Creek, and Banana Creek. Well, you know, I mean, they. I saw we sent a nice letter, uh, thank you letter to, to them. That was, yeah, no, sorry. It's, uh, you know, it's a pretty notable event. Uh, they, they moved 30,000 cubic yards of sand, which is quite a bit, quite a bit. And yeah. hopefully Manantic will be happier with uh, you know, the marina and also with that we've had a number of people complain about, you know, that, that, that Manantic was dying. Did they end up going did they end up going further up with the Manantic? They went to talk about that. Stopped. Stopped. Technically yeah. stopped it yeah, stopped to talk at a way. Because that's the last public right. you know, effective public land they could swim that way. And that was that was the rationale. Yeah. Well I think that's what the permit originally stated. It was some sort of maintenance permit, correct? Was it a maintenance dredge that was done finally there or was that a regular it was a dredge. This was a yeah. No, I mean the, the the permit was a maintenance per type permit. I think so. They had a start and stop point. I think right. 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 Yeah. They only do what they've done before. Yeah, that's, that's the way the, things yeah. are going now. The additional one that Matt thinking about that was an extra proposal that didn't make it into that. It was right. something totally separate. Yeah. Future future efforts, I think, could be springboarded off of this development right so this is the largest to put into perspective the largest dredge projects that's taken place in this township in more than 40 years hands down badly needed and the banana uh creek association folks right now have an opportunity hopefully maybe to be working with the town and the public private sort of setting to capitalize on they've got to that point now through some sort of new proposed project, which will not be the county, could continue on from there. Obviously, a quarter of their work has already been accomplished now. So it's it's great. It's phenomenal. Phenomenal project and went off without a hitch. I mean, like, good, 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 great job. Those guys were great. They're waiting now quick. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They worked every day. It's all pretty consistent. I did. I, I went and skinned the bottom pretty much everywhere. There's one or two little humps, which I think will probably roll into the... Yeah, I found one when I was bringing yeah. my boat in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you stay in the channel, it's fine. But as soon as you get out, you can get out of the channel and get in trouble very yeah, real quick. Yeah. 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 I think marking it is going to be a key factor. Yeah, definitely. Maybe, maybe we'll need, you know, maybe we should have a few more buoys in there on the way in. Yeah. Uh, Oh, all the you know, all the aids are out in case you guys hadn't seen that. I noticed you got lost in the other day. Everything, everything is out. Like November fifteenth rolled around, and we're like, "See ya, let's yep. get this done while the weather's warm." So uh, they're out, they're stored. They'll go back in after by excuse me by May fifteenth. They'll be back in April fifteenth by April fifteenth. Too many dates. Right. No, that was uh, that was great. So you say uh, not county, you mean private? It would be a or private it would, company. It, right. The county is not, like Al just said, the county is likely not going to take on the permitting process and, and everything associated with trying to do a new section of dredge. Right. But that doesn't mean that it can't be accomplished. It just means that the county isn't going to do it for the token amount of money that we pay to the yeah. Right. Uh, it could be a, a town sponsored thing, a private sponsored thing, a grant sponsored thing. There's a whole bunch of different ways it could happen, but it's not going to happen from the cap. May need the county's permit that they have for that to work off of, right? To start there and go beyond. But uh, I think there's a lot of promise there for future efforts. All right. Yeah. Al, thanks for bringing that up. Um, anything else we missed? I'd like to just add one observation I had, um, and it goes to the whole um, dock um, inspection, condition of docks, that sort of thing. Um, 
anybody that doesn't know, I walk around every square inch of the island, specifically West Neck more so, so I know every inch and every dock under and over and around. And I came across the dock, I guess it was about three weeks ago, where I don't know who the homeowner or contractor had come in and new stringers, new decking over the top of the old stringers and decking. <laughs> now I saw this happen about 20 years ago, closer to uh, Daniel Lord Road. And now, you know, here it is 15, 20 years later, that dock down by Daniel Lord Road, well, there's no stringers or decking under there anymore. It got disintegrated into the creek. This new um, this dock was recently done, I have to say, within the last six months to a year. But they are, they went in and they new stringers and new decking over the old without removing the old. And I don't know what was there, can be was done. Was there a permit or is this? I doubt it was a permit because I don't think it cost ten thousand dollars to for the homeowner to come and do it if it was the homeowner, you know. I mean, it wasn't that, it was just new stringers and new decking, okay. which you know, That's if it's true. under. Ten thousand dollars, it would trigger. In West Neck, but I just I noticed that this happened just recently, and I am aware of something that happened a long time ago, and I see the results of what happened a long time ago, and I see that happening here in the future, and I just wanted to put it on the table. I don't know what can be done about it. I don't know how to address it. I don't know. You know, I'm just putting. It was an observation I had. No one. The committee and you know liaisons to know about it there was a lot of feed there was a lot of pushback on uh, dock inspections <laughs> you think and i think that this would kind of fall into that category <laughs> i don't know how or it's it's complaint driven tom so say yeah. the same thing as everything yeah. like realistically yeah i think the appropriate course of action for this is if you anybody whoever it is yeah. if you see something that you suspect is illegal or going to result in some sort of issues or, or concerns, report it to the appropriate authority in this particular circumstance, it would be the, the, building, the department. building department again, right? Yeah. And let them make a determination. Yes, they don't need a permit. Uh, no, they're, they, they don't need to secure that stuff or they're going to remove it, whatever it happens to be, <laughs> right? But, it's just, I don't think it, I don't think the current code or the code that we are going through now to recreate is addressing situations such as this. That's why I'm bringing it. I know yeah, you reported to the building inspector, but that's something that's just come up. I don't think anybody even thought about somebody doing this. This is where? Uh, up in West Neck, there's a dock that somebody re new stringers, new decking over the top of the old stringers and the old decking. And they, you know, at 20 years or 15 years before that, it happened to another dock closer towards uh, Daniel Ward Road, where they did the same thing. New stringers, new decking over the top of the existing stringers and decking. And since then, the other dock by Daniel Ward Road, those stringers and decking are gone. They rotted into the creek. And I fear the same thing's going to happen. At the original time. ones that they built the over. The original ones that they so just decked over the top. It's like the owner's doing a job or yeah. if someone's doing it for yeah. less than 10 grand, just kind of covering over the old and then the, the old falls apart. And I know somebody who did, you know, replace decking in West Neck in the, in Banana Creek. You know, I mean, he just put new CCA decking down. I mean, I don't know. I mean, he did it himself, you know, like it was like rotten, you know. It's well, that's what it kind of looked like. It looked like a homeowner did it or, yeah. you know, contractor came in. You know, obviously it wasn't ten thousand dollars worth of work, so it wouldn't have triggered anything. I don't know. You can but get a contractor to show up for less than ten grand. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tom. He's how many show up for nine 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 nine? Tom, Tom, I've seen this happen more than once. You have too. Okay. Yes. Because this is only the second time I've seen this. Yeah. Um, so it's not prevalent. I, I know for a fact, in times past, there was a. No, no longer a dock on the causeway that somebody used to work on when a board would come up and put a couple boards down. Yeah, no, this is, it was completely... That dock's gone, though. 
It was completely. <laughs> was it was it sawed in half? Or? <laughs> yeah, no. This no one, one really knows. Was, this was basically they redecked and restringed it, but they didn't remove the old. Right. You know, the problem is, is with removing not removing the old. Right. You know, it's uh, it's an interesting. It's one. just a, it's a, something I observed, and I think that it you know. It's a good observation, Tom. We have something that proof. I don't think it's one of those things that it's it's. It's not prevalent. It doesn't prevalent, happen all the time. You know, I mean, I think, but you know, I don't know. Is there a way to prevent that from happening? I don't know. Do oh, we yeah. want to? Yeah. I mean, existing exactly. Code, right. So the existing yeah. code. Your dock permit permittee cannot allow their dock to become a hazard to navigation, nuisance to to uh, public free passage under and around. Right. So if you saw something like this, if the abandoned structure, right, which is underneath the new structure now, became a hazard to navigation or an obstruction to the free passageway around the area, you report it and the building department can compel the person to remedy it or face whatever bond, fine, penalty, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, there is, there's a provision there. Right. Yeah, it just yeah. needs to be, just because they abandoned it doesn't mean it's going to fall apart and become something. It probably will, because out of sight, out of mind. But if it gets to that point, now it's a problem. This is the appropriate authority. Here's the appropriate action. And hopefully it gets from. Right. So that would be my, you know, and, we, and it's probably less likely to fall apart. If you put stringers directly, so if you put stringers exactly. directly on top of where yeah. the other boards were nailed in, that's going to hold for until until the wood rots. I mean, that's well, I saw hold. the same exact thing happen up the creek, like I said, 15, 20 years earlier, and all that stuff in that particular dock has rotted and disintegrated and disappeared. Yeah, so it will eventually happen. Yeah. Well, again, I happen to know somebody who did something like this, but the reason why they did it was a the, the decking was bad, but. They wanted to get the thing a little higher, so I think that's why so they did it. I think you and I are talking about the same. It's one possible. It sounds very similar. Ago. Yeah, you know, I think we got the same one from twenty years ago. Yeah, no, it was, wasn't twenty. Years. I don't know. The one I'm it thinking of was recently. I had a pulley line at Daniel at Daniel Wood Road then that I was. Using. Yeah, I'm not. So that's I'm not. Really that's not where I was thinking. But <laughs> yeah, I, I just wanted to bring it to. But the, I just you know from from my point of view, I would think you know you don't want to regulate. Everybody to death here, you know. I mean, I think as as Bo points out, there's something in the code, and you know, the guy wouldn't be fixing the dock up if he, you know, if he was going to let it fall, you know, part of it fall apart. I can't, you know. I think we have to give some benefit of the doubt to the property owner in some cases. I mean, I'm not, I, you know, obviously if he's doing it himself and he brings down his backhoe. And he's starting to dig out and put, you know, dredge himself and no, things no, like right, that. Right. I mean, there's, there's a no, limit right, to what right. you can my do. My concern was, was leaving the old to deteriorate. That was my concern. Right, right. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 you know, it's covered and it's been in the code for 25 years and it's still in the, it's in the new amendment that, that deal with that situation. So just got to point it out to the yep. building department. Get them down here. Can't do anything until it starts to fall apart, though. Functionally. Unless, I mean, yeah. if the work looks to you, in your opinion, that it's in excess of $10,000, yeah. you can at least generate an inquiry. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, but it's, that's not, I'm not... I'm not saying you just, you know, there's a point of some time, right. but that's if, why it it's looks, if it looks like it, it should require a permit, you all are the ones who would know. Work. So, you know. You saw it. Know. It sounds like a lot of lumber. There's no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We cycled them, but we cycled plastic. For the record, I would have voted yes on those two applications. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. You didn't get the memo on five o'clock versus six o'clock. Well, there, I, as I went back, I was. I, I jumped to the shower. Ah, you know, my daughter broke her leg, and so in like a Chinese fire drill. You know, because she has the three kids and she can't move. Or whatever. You know, so I jumped in the shower, and then I, and then I said, well, maybe this was five thirty. And then I, I, I'll check before I go. So I don't want, you know, I figured I wanted to forewarn myself. And then I saw it was five o'clock. Well, better, maybe not better late than never. 
definitely. Nice to see you. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can second the motion to, uh, to adjourn. I second it. <laughs> you not always showed up in the first. Well, there we go. And a happy time.